Hey everybody, it is Watermaker Service Day. So we're down here in the U.S. Virgin Islands and we're getting ready to make a long trip back up to the continental United States, maybe Maine. Before we do that, we want to make sure that all the boat, boat's systems are 100% ready to go. And one of the systems that is key to our survival on the boat is the water maker. This provides all of our fresh water. We don't get water from anywhere else. And it is time to give it a little bit of service. Here's what it needs. So the first thing that we need to do is change the oil on the pump. Uh, you need to change this every 500 hours or once a year. The next thing that we need to do is we're going to change uh, this primary filter. It looks like it's actually in pretty good shape, but it's been at least six months since we've changed it. We've been in mostly pretty clear, clean water down here, so it hasn't gotten uh, too gunked up with any you know mud or sediment, but uh, it's a good thing to uh, clean that. We'll put a fresh one in, and hopefully we'll get another six months out of it. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to change the membrane. This membrane is what filters the salt water and the salt out of the water to make it into fresh water. So this right here, this tube, is the most key section of the water maker along with the pump which pressurizes all that water. So, that being said, let's get to work. All right, we've got our manual here and that's gonna be the first step. Servicing the pump. So the first thing that we do, we need to do is we need to get the pump off of our little mounting pad down here. This is going to allow us to make sure that the pump is uh, level or beyond that so we can kind of tilt it and drain a little bit more of the old oil out that way. And you may be able to hear the waves crashing in the background or up against our stern. We are at an anchorage and performing this service at anchor. All right, so I've got my four screws out, which mount the water maker to its pad, or the pump to its pad, and now you can see that I can actually move this guy around a little bit. We want to be careful not to move them too much because we do have some electrical wires going to it. And the next step in my process here, put a couple towels down and maybe read the manual. Okay, can you give me the Allens? The oil drain in here is a small, we'll call it maybe a six millimeter Allen. All right, we found our Allen wrench here. And then we're gonna need a little cup. And then also what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this board and we're going to boost up. We put this board in to boost up this side of the water maker here, so it's going to maybe help the oil run a little bit downhill to the drain. Should be a lefty loosey, but uh, it's pretty tight down here, and I think I'm going to get my hammer, my crescent hammer out. So for those of you that don't live on a boat yet, what you're going to find is that your crescent wrench is one of your best tools to have on the boat. Being a little bit of a motorcycle mechanic and racing guy uh, with jet skis and motorcycles and two-stroke engines back in the day, I used to laugh at people that used crescent wrenches. That's just something as a mechanic you just don't do. But life on a boat changes that. You give up on standards, you use what's available, because you just can't carry all the tools that you wish you had. Okay, one, two, three. Oh, there we go. Got it. All right, we've got our oil coming out. I didn't make too much of a mess. Let's open this top and let the air come in. The motor holds about six ounces of oil. And for some reason, the manufacturer's specifications really didn't tell us what type of oil is proper. It looks like some synthetic oil uh, that was fairly decently thick came out. 
but we'll have a look at it here once it comes, once we drain it all out. Okay, guys, I got most of that oil out. We're still dripping. It's coming out pretty slow. I'm going to put the plug in loosely, wipe up any excess. And then there's our oil right there. So it's supposed to hold about six ounces. I figure this is probably a 12 ounce cup. And inside the oil looks okay. The good part is there's no water in it, but we can see that there's a little bit of metal flakes and wear in there. That's completely normal. So what we're going to do to get rid of uh, and try and flush out any of those other metal flakes is to uh, do a little bit of a rinse. It's one extra step, but we're going to kind of flush this with some new oil and have it come out, uh, come out the bottom there. But overall, our oil looked in excellent condition, which is a very good sign. And we're going to go ahead and dump this into our boat's used oil container and then make sure that you write used oil on this container. We've got all the oil out. We're going to go ahead and uh, put our drain plug back in here. So we've got our oil plug back in and we're tightening him up, tightening him back up with our trusty multi-tool here. Now we're going to add in about six ounces of oil. So there we go. We've got our six ounces of oil in there. Let's wipe our, our cup off here. Put him back. Uh, we've got to make sure that we get rid of this additional excess used oil in our used oil container. Very important to ensure your oil doesn't go into your bilge. It's the last thing you want. Not only makes a giant mess, but it's bad for the environment. Not saying that I'm a perfect environmental person here, but uh, we always try and do our best. And let's put our oil cap back on. I'm actually going to give this top a quick wipe down before I do that. Looks good. So we have completed our oil change. We'll line our mounting screws back up here. And we'll go ahead and get our mounting screws started again. So one thing to think about if you're contemplating installing a water maker is mounting it in a, in a way that you can easily maintain it. I probably could have put this in a tighter spot, maybe save a little bit more space on the boat. But at the same time, it's a critical system that does need maintenance, and I want to be able to access all of my systems. While we're at this, let me tell you a little bit about the type of water maker that it is. So this is a 12-volt DC water maker, which means it runs off of our batteries, which our batteries can then be charged with solar or our engine power. So uh, this will run off any excess power uh, that we get. Being 12 volt DC, its capacity is significantly less per hour or per day than quite a few other systems that utilize 110 or 220 volt AC. But this is a Village Marine Little Wonder 160-200, and it's capable of roughly 7.5 gallons per hour of water making. So essentially we can pretty much fill our tanks if we let it run all day. We don't normally do that. I think the most we've allowed it to run is maybe eight or ten hours at once, which, you know, that's good for 70 gallons of water. So that fills one of our tanks. So we feel that for us, it has a good enough capacity. It's small, it's light, it's easy to service. It may not be the absolutely most efficient water maker on the planet. It's also cost effective. It's considerably less expensive than some of the other more automated models. And unlike the automated models, uh, everything is serviceable. There's no electronics here. So it's very simple maintenance. Even I can do it, which says something about it. So that's what we were going for. We definitely don't have the budget to pay uh, others to service our equipment. And if you do have that type of budget, 
you know, maybe you want to go with a, a higher capacity, more tech savvy water maker with some some of the uh, the automatic type stuff because that would be just really cool to have. But on our do-it-yourself budget, this is what we came up with. The other reason we like to be able to maintain it ourselves is if it's going to happen, it's going to happen out there. That's a quote from Captain Ron. We found that he's pretty spot on. So if you go watch the Captain Ron movie, you'll find that uh, it's a good precursor to learning about cruising on a sailboat. Wait a minute. We don't even know if this thing is safe or not. Well, the best way to find out is to get her out on the ocean, kitty. Anything's going to happen, it's going to happen out there. But we've got our oil all changed. Uh, we're going to once, and our motor is remounted to our bracket here. And we're going to once again do the old call out to our lovely assistant and have her turn the motor on so we can check it real quick. Are you guys ready? Say it along with me. Hey, Kate. Yeah. Can you turn on the water maker switch, please? Okay, can you turn it off? Turn them off. All right, very good. Water maker is back up and running. No bad noises. We're checking the uh, oil level in the sight glass there, and it seems to be all a okay. We've got oil in there. No metal flakes. No water in the oil, and uh, we're looking really good. So. Our water maker pump should now be good for another 500 hours or a whole year. Is because our total dissolved solids measurement in our uh, water that's being produced has gone up to being around between 600 and 650 on a regular basis. So what causes that is over time, oil and you know, biological materials tend to degrade uh, the membrane. And our membrane is, I'm going to call it roughly 12 years old. So um, it's time. So here is our new membrane, which is handed in by our lovely assistant, Kate. It is a marker, which now owns Village Marine, number 33-3038. And this is supposed to fit uh, directly in our system and be a direct OEM replacement here. We you know it also uh, you know, came with some different fittings. Uh, it came with the silicone uh, for the O-rings and we also made sure we ordered and were shipped an O-ring uh, kit as well. So that's critical if you're going to take this apart. You definitely want to put new O-rings in. So here we go. We're going to set our membrane up here. We're going to make sure we have our manual handy so that we don't screw anything up. And our first step here is disconnect plumbing from pressure vessel for disassembly. So um, what we need to uh, take apart here is there's two fittings here on this tube and then there's a fitting back here. So our first one's going to be our high pressure line. All right, cool. Kate's going to bring us some big towels here. We're going to put this down. We're definitely going to have some water coming out. We've already closed the through hole into the boat. And there we go. So now our tube is off here. It's going to have a little bit of water. Keep in mind, this is salt water. We really don't like salt water going into our bilge. So we're going to try and mop most of it up. All right, our next step here is we need to go ahead and remove this fitting. Which, boy, this makes me nervous, but we have to do it. new area 
area for me. All right, we are loose there. There we go. We've got our first piece off here. We want to remember the orientation here. The short part is at the top, the long part is at the bottom. So we're going to go ahead and get some water out of this, set that piece aside. Um, now we'll be able to unbolt and slide our ends off. So now that we have our first step done, we can remove the six fasteners and cap rings holding each end plug with an Allen wrench. Place a mark on each end plug to be removed. Place a corresponding mark on each end collar. This will ensure proper orientation during assembly. All right, so we're going to need a Sharpie marker and we're going to make a little mark on these guys to make sure that we put them back in the right orientation. So one thing that we're going to find out about here real quick is that I try to install the water maker in a manner in which I can remove the membrane without having to dismount everything. Uh, hopefully all of our clearances work out and we can do this. Thank you, lovely assistant Kate. We've got our Sharpie marker. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a line on top here, which is going to correspond to a line on the top. I'll show you this, what I do here. I'm going to do a line and a line. And now we know if those two lines are in alignment, that we will have no problem putting it back together in the right configuration. So next step is we need to take the ends of our water maker off. So always remember, these are righty tighty, lefty loosey. You guys probably knew that already at home. And once again, if I am doing anything that you guys see incorrect in the video, please, please, please comment below so we can fix anything before we give anybody some bad advice on another boat in the future. All right, so as we're removing these bolts, one thing we're going to do is we're going to grab a uh, small Tupperware bin so that we can place all of our items in one spot. They can all stay together. And then we know where they are for reassembly. So lovely assistant Kate is handing me a little bin there. Lovely assistant Kate is definitely not just an assistant. Kate is a full-on co-captain of this boat, but she does a lot of other things. Um, she makes sure a lot of other systems on the boat stay running. She makes sure that we have laundry. She makes sure that we're fed. She's responsible for the refrigeration systems. So we each have our, our own duties. And she's becoming an expert at those. And as you can see, I'm not quite an expert at the water maker yet, but uh, we're working on it. So just because Kate's behind the scenes right now, doesn't mean she's not doing anything to help. It saves a huge amount of time to have an assistant or a helper um, be able to go get things and hand you things so you don't have to continually uh, climb in and out of these small compartments. Me being six foot two, it's sometimes pretty tricky for me to get in and out of a lazarette. I bang my head a lot. And that's where it's really nice to have Kate be able to go grab me a few things so I can continue working without a big pause. Oh, and did I mention my legs are falling asleep? Okay, we've got our bolts out of the ends. Let's go ahead and read the next step. Locate the screwdriver slots located on opposite ends of the pressure vessel end collar. Place an appropriate size slot screwdriver in each slot. Twist both screwdrivers until the end of the plug breaks loose from the pressure vessel. The screwdrivers can now be placed between the end plug and the collar. A prying motion on both sides of the end plug with the screwdrivers will quick, quickly remove it. Use this procedure for both end caps. Okay. 
right. Woo. It's out. Gotta do the same thing now on the other side. So I've gotta be honest, I'm not a big fan of the way that this goes, but I don't like prying on plastic pieces. But such seems to be the way that this is designed. Okay, I think we're there. All right. Let's move on to step four. Note which end of the pressure vessel the brine seal is visible from. The brine seal is a black U-cup seal on the membrane outer diameter near one end. This is the feed end of the pressure vessel. When reinstalling the RO membrane, the brine seal must be located at the feed end of the pressure vessel. All right, this is our feed end. So according to step four, we should have a nice little black fitting in there. I do not see any black fitting. Okay, so apparently we don't have a brine seal. We're on to step five here. It says, once the membrane is released from the product O-ring, pull membrane from brine end until completely free of vessel. Here we go. All right, I'm gonna take my glove off here so it doesn't get any oil on it. All right, I'm successful in that our membrane was able to be removed. It says replace O-rings if there is visible damage. Inspect all O-rings, product O-rings, end plug O-rings, and brine seal. The product water O-rings are internal O-rings inside the center hole in the end cap. Refer to 601. Clean all parts thoroughly. Lubricate O-rings and entrances to pressure vessel, glycerin or silicone lubricant. Locate discharge end of pressure vessel. Install discharge end plug by lining up the holes of the pressure vessel. Paying attention to the reference mark. Position end cap ring. Insert fasteners by hand. Okay. So I think we want to be really careful not to damage any of this Delrin type uh, plastic, whatever this is on the end. Uh, so we've got our O-rings off that end. Let's go ahead and take our O-rings off of this end here. And I'm going to keep these O-rings around. They seem like they're in pretty good shape. But I was told that one of the reasons that your water maker could be putting out a lower or a high, too high of a TDS number is that it's possible that one of those O-rings could have gone bad and that could allow a little bit of salt water by. So replacing the O-rings is highly recommended. Okay then, we've got our O-rings taken out of our uh, end plugs here and uh, we've got our new O-rings here. They do need to be lubricated though with a silicone or glycerin grease. We're going to go ahead and do that. But that came inside of our new membrane here. So let's go ahead and open this up. We've got everything back in there. All right, we've now got all of our new O-rings in on the outer portion here.
Okay, I've got my other end cap on here, and now we are ready to reconnect our high pressure hose. There's a very small O-ring that fits right inside of there. You want to make sure that is there. We're going to go ahead, slide this hose on there. Okay. Go ahead and tighten that bad boy up. So this kind of gives you a good idea of how you have metal to metal contact here, and that is actually your seal. So you want to be very careful, make sure that you line these up properly when you put them on. Alright, so we've got our water maker basically put back together. We've got our hoses back on the ends. We've got our end caps on. We've replaced our membrane and we have new O-rings on the inside. So the next step that we're going to do is put a brand new primary filter in. Might as well feed this new membrane the best quality water that we can. Okay, so we've got our brand new primary filter in there. I'm going to go ahead and reinstall him. These are essentially the exact same thing as what you have in a home water filter system. So you can actually uh, find these filters at a Home Depot or somewhere else if you can't get them shipped in from the water maker company. Got our little tool here. Tighten it back up. All right, I think we're all set here. We've pretty much got everything finished up here. We've serviced everything on the water maker. Our next step is going to be turning it on and giving it a test. And we're going to make sure all the water flows through. First thing is going to be to check for no leaks. And then once everything's good, we're going to pressurize it, bring it up to spec, and then we're going to test the water flow and uh, see how our new membrane works for us. The first thing we need to do is open our through hall, which lovely assistant Kate is going to take care of there for us. All right, through hall's open. open. All right, go ahead and turn it on. Alright, our next step in this process is to test the quality of the water that is coming out of the water maker. So first thing we're going to do, grab a cup, put it underneath our outflow tester here. We have two different outflows. One goes here into this back sink, and the other one goes forward into our water tanks. Before we send it into our water tanks, we always want to make sure that we have good quality water. So we're going to fill this cup up with about five or six ounces of water. And then we're going to use our TDS meter to measure what's called the total dissolved solids inside of our water. So we'll turn that on, make sure he's at zero. And we'll go ahead and dip him in. And right now we're measuring 321, 318 on our TDS meter. So that's pretty good. Uh, anything basically under 500 is good according to the World Health Organization. And uh, some water makers will uh, go down into the 100 levels, and uh, it's safe to drink really on up to about 750 parts per million as needed. But for pretty much the lower the better. Uh, some people have some different variations based on tests, but 312 is very good. All right, so now that we're ready for some water to go into the tank, we've got our little switch here, which diverts it from the sink into our hose, which runs all the way up to our water tanks in the front. We just flip that switch and we're putting water in the tank. 312, baby. 
My bad. <laughs>